Hello, so I think that's all rolling and uh, here we are again for another little chat and a video and um, it is the 7th of December so uh, hello there and I am once again back in my writing room because I'm starting to do these with the video as well so if you're watching on YouTube hello um, you know haven't you got anything better to do um, if you are um, listening on the podcast or on my website at microcampling.com welcome to you as well it's great to have you wherever you are coming from so what I thought I'd do today is um, do a quick little reading and this will be of sort of more interest really to people who are following along with the Devonshire Mysteries and uh, just a quick mention because I do like to mention every now and then that if you join my site at microcampling.com you can sign up for the um, Death at Blackingstone Rock little series of emails, which is uh, it's not a newsletter exactly. It is a story told by a series of emails. So you are in the story uh, playing the part of Dan Corrigan, who's like an, an, well, he's a kind of an amateur sleuth in the Devonshire Mysteries. And his sidekick, Alan Hargreaves, is sending him emails and you are getting those emails and the story unfolds. It's kind of a, a snowed in uh, mystery in that tradition. And the story is told over about, I think, about 18, possibly slightly more emails. So that is on there at michaelcampling.com. And it's um, it's worth a go because it's there all the time. I think sometimes people think it was only put up there once and they, you, know, you might have missed it. But no, it's um, it's an evergreen thing. You can sign up whenever you like and the, uh, the sequence should be automatic and it should feed out to you. But going back to Dan and Alan, what I would like to do, I'm sorry because I know it's a bit disconcerting when I don't look at the camera, but I can't look at the camera and read at the same time. So here's a little bit from the work in progress. It's actually um, chapter two and I'm, I can't do many of these because it'll it'll create too many spoilers. But um, but here's just a little bit uh, to give a bit of a viewpoint of Alan. And in this chapter, Alan has gone to Exeter to quite a, um, a posh hotel uh he's gone into the um the restaurant there where he's meeting his agent who unusually has come all the way from london which is like a rare thing it doesn't normally happen um alan you may remember is uh, a writer of children's stories so um he's gone to meet his agent who's called katie emsworth <clears throat> Katie looked up as Alan approached, a carefully cultivated smile on her lips. Her gaze seemed to take in everything about him, from his ruffled hair right down to the scuffs on his shoes. And as always when he met his agent, he was glad that she was on his side. Katie, Alan said, I do hope I haven't kept you waiting. Not at all, Katie replied. We've only just ordered. I took the liberty of getting you an Americano and an almond croissant. That is what you like, isn't it? Alan tried to hide his surprise, but he didn't make a very good job of it. Perfect. Uh, that's exactly what I'd have chosen. Thank you. I always remember the details for my best clients. But do sit down, Alan. There's no need to stand on ceremony. You're among friends here. Katie gestured to her companion. This is Clive Merriweather. He's our new... It's hard to read. He's our new PR guru. Sit next to him. You're going to get on like a house on fire. Nice to meet you, Clive, Alan said as he pulled out a chair and sat down. Always good to know a guru. While they shook hands, Clive regarded Alan from beneath lowered eyelids. Happy to be here, Alan. I've been reading up on your career and I was looking forward to meeting you in the flesh. Well, here I am. What you see is what you get. I hope that I don't disappoint. Not at all. Clive smiled indulgently, but he shared a look with Katie some unspoken message passing between them that Alan couldn't quite interpret. A waiter arrived bearing a tray of drinks and pastries and while the refreshments were dispensed Katie made small talk asking Alan about his plans for the summer. Oh I'll probably take a week or two off and catch up with some gardening Alan said taking a sip of his coffee and I'll have plenty of days out either up on the moors or at the coast that's the beauty of Devon. You don't have to go far to enjoy some of the best scenery in the world. It's right here on our doorstep. That sounds perfectly idyllic, Katie replied. So you're not planning on getting involved with any mysterious murders then? Alan spluttered into his coffee cup and he set his drink down on the table, grabbing a napkin to dab at his mouth. I beg your pardon? 
There's no need to be coy, Katie said. We live in the internet age, Alan. News of your exploits has travelled. There's no such thing as privacy anymore. Isn't that right, Clive? Clive leaned forward, fixing Alan with his keen gaze. Come on, Alan. You didn't really expect to get away with it, did you? In certain circles, you're a household name. Your books are probably in every school library in the country. There are children who dress up as your characters on World Book Day. People know who you are. Did you really think you could solve a murder and no one would find out? Well, um... Alan gulped down a mouthful of coffee, playing for time while he tried to work out how much Katie and Clive already knew about his adventures with Dan. But Katie and Clive were studying him intently. He had to say something. To be honest, I'd hope to keep that side of things under wraps. I suppose that was a little optimistic of me. Clive stared at Alan as though he was a member of some exotic species. Seriously? You have heard of Google, haven't you, Alan? Oh, and that's my phone waking up when I said that magic word. But I was just going to stop the reading there, so that's uh, that's good. And uh, I'll see if I can uh, just uh, make that go away a bit so I can see what's going on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, little reading. Um, it's a work in progress, so you know that will be will be rewritten. It'll be redrafted uh, probably a couple of times, you know, before it it goes through to an editor. So. Um, um, it's fairly clean because I tend to write fairly, fairly clean um, drafts and then improve and improve and improve as much as possible. Um, oh, yeah, of course, it's a bit of a writer thing. When people talk about a clean draft, what they mean is as opposed to a scrappy one that, you know, is, is rather full of uh, half finished sentences and things, which uh, sometimes people blast down stuff um, without really thinking about the sentence structure and, and that kind of thing and then tidy it up. I don't really do that. I tend to uh, work and work at things as I go. But it just gives you a little flavour that um, things are changing for Alan as well as for Dan. It's kind of a, although I describe him as Dan's sidekick, it's it's kind of an ensemble thing in a way, if that's the right word, um, to use for the two main characters. There are some characters that recur through the books and some pop up again here and there. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the policeman that Spiller will be turning up as well. So he's been in some of the other books. So I won't say any more because sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a surprise when um, when characters appear. And I'm still working away with it, I'm afraid. It's, I was hoping it was going to be done um, way before Christmas and it's just taking me a long time, this book. It's the way it goes sometimes, I'm afraid. Sometimes uh, things are slow. Sometimes it's because life gets in the way and uh, one thing or another. What is ideal is if, if you can have like a really long, for me anyway, a long uninterrupted period of, you know, a few weeks when you can uh, work away with a consistent routine. And, um, and when other things happen, you kind of uh, get a bit thrown out. But I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to be patient and uh, it will get there. We'll, we will... Um, produce a book and I hope it'll be one that you will enjoy and it will take the characters a bit further on and I do try to make all the Devonshire mysteries um, stand on their own two feet so if you do read them in different a different order it really shouldn't matter you might miss like an odd reference here or there but it shouldn't spoil the story uh, I keep that kind of thing down to a minimum on the whole I try to sort of uh, give a picture of who a character is if they're recurring you know if um, quite quickly within a few you know sentence or two I'd like people to know who we are talking about or the nature of the person if even if you haven't met them before if that makes sense so I haven't really had people asking questions it would be great if we had questions and comments so that I could do these um, th these kind of videos with a specific topic in mind and the podcast as well of course it's still very much the audio um, experience i hope it's uh kind of worthwhile to the, the handful of people who listen to it it's great to have you along also another quick mention just to keep reminding people about the little thank you videos which i am doing to the kind folks who have sent me a mug of tea or a mug of coffee using the coffee.com uh, which you can find it about out about on my website at michaelcampling.com and you should be able to find a link there to my Instagram account because I'm doing these little reels, which are like little short videos. 
uh, 30 seconds where I say thank you to uh, each person and, you know, raise a mug of tea to each person who's kindly sent me a mug of tea. So it seemed a fitting thing to do. So uh, every now and then I do them um, when I'm having a hot drink, which is quite frequently during the day. And I've got kind of a bit of time to do it. So um, that seems to be quite short. I've only done 10 minutes so far. I don't think I have any other huge amounts of news to uh, to sort of tell you about, though, because, um, you know, work is just continuing and uh, we are kind of rolling towards Christmas at rather frightening speed, aren't we? And um, I'm kind of not prepared for it um, after after last year's kind of disastrous one where people did lots of preparations. And then here in the UK, it was pretty much cancelled, <laughs> but we still had a nice day. We just couldn't have family and, and so on around, which was a shame. But uh, hopefully that will happen this year. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, I'll have to um, take a leap of faith and go ahead and uh, get some preparations done and some, some food made. Just thinking of food while I'm rambling away. I did say ages ago that I would love to get a Devonshire Mysteries cookbook going. And I'm afraid I've got nowhere with that. Um, it is going to be one of those things that's going to have to wait until there isn't a book in the offing. Um, and because I'm trying to do these other things, uh, you know, videos and featured photos, featured photos are going up onto the website every week. And there's a nice bunch up there I put yesterday from um, Hay Tor, which is up on Dartmoor. Had a lovely bracing walk in a really um, howling gale of a cold wind, but the sky was clear and blue and you could see all the way to the coast, which was lovely to be able to look out and see the sea. And it really blew the cobwebs away, but uh, we needed scarf and hat and coat and gloves and everything but um yeah the nice thing was it was quiet up there so the weather would put people off from going up there because it's quite exposed quite high ground um yeah have a look at those pictures a, a tour if you're interested is a, a sort of geological feature now i might get this wrong i'm not an expert on this but i have been told somewhere that it's like if you imagine the central uh, molten rock in a volcano that then hardens and then the outer part of the volcano uh, is eroded. You're left with this kind of strange vertical rock formation uh, with all kinds of interesting shapes and textures on it. And um, yeah, that is what I believe a tour is. And I also believe that it's a sort of a corruption of the word tower. So hey tour was possibly called some variation of a high tower because the, the rocks are a bit sort of towering up. I didn't climb up it. You can climb up it to the top, but the wind was bad enough at the bottom, never mind at the top. But yeah, it was great. Lottie had a good run about. And I took uh, quite a few photos and uploaded them to the website. I think there were about 10 photos on there. If you want to see uh, Dartmoor in winter, it's a beautiful kind of wild um, landscape. You, you might think it's a bit kind of bleak in some ways, but it's, it's I like to think of it more as being dramatic. It's, um, it's not so much... Um, it's not like a depressing thing when you look at it. It's just like this wide open space and it's kind of rugged and dramatic, which I rather enjoy. And, you know, it's still got traces of green as well as the brown leaves and brown bracken and so on. Not very big on trees, though, because um, it's a bit wild up there for trees to survive. You get a few kind of crooked hawthorns and uh, here and there you get some little um, fir trees lower down and so on. But um, yeah. It's uh, it's a beautiful place and uh, it, it informs the writing of the um, of the Devonshire Mysteries. And just coming uh, takes us full circle to what I was saying earlier about the death at Blackingstone Rock. And uh, I think Blackingstone Rock is a tour as well. So um, that kind of idea of the bleak landscape in winter, the harsh environment, the snow, the blizzards, it's all there in that little adventure. You can sign up and get the emails. It's all totally free. It doesn't commit you to any other newsletter. You just have to join the site. But you just need a name and an email address. Activate it because you'll get a confirmation email. And that's important because I don't want, I don't want uh, you know, bots and malware and things getting into the site. So I ask people to confirm their email address and then you're in. You sign up for the um, Death at Blackingstone Rock series. And then... I think you've got to confirm that one actually just to make sure I don't spam anybody. So these things are just like click on a link in the email and you're in. That's it. And it starts straight away. And then the emails come more or less in real time. So there might be two one day or one one day or three. You know, depends on uh, what Alan was doing at the time and how often he got to 
update Dan on what was happening. If you don't like the sound of that, you can go to my PayHip store. Best way to find that is probably just nip to my site at michaelcampling.com and I'm sure there's a link there to the store. Um, and you can just buy all the emails compiled into an ebook and uh, read them one after the other. Not quite so, uh, not quite so such a fun way of doing it. It's not the way I intended it to be delivered, but it's it's there for people who who want it that way. Because I do like to offer a choice, and it's, that's totally free. Um, I did for a little while ask for a donation, which I gave to the Dartmoor Search and Rescue, but I kind of tied that up because I wanted to round all the donations up. So I got the donations up, rounded them up, and um, and handed them over. Sorry, that was a, a text probably on my phone. I really should have uh, taken it out of the room. OK, so thank you very much for watching. If you're on YouTube or the video should be on my Facebook page. Uh, and thank you very much for listening. And especially if you're subscribed to the podcast. And a huge thank you just to everyone who has supported me uh, by sending me a mug of tea or a mug of coffee. If you haven't had your thank you message on Instagram yet, that will be coming. Um, I'll be getting through everybody. I've sort of printed off a list and I'll, I'll try and make sure I get through every single person, uh, which will take a little while um, and then <laughs> till I catch up, hopefully. OK, so um, it's getting wintry here in uh, Devon and um, we've had another storm rolling in. I got soaked today walking Notting, but um, yeah, quite a cool night, I think. So thank you very much, everybody. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Look after yourselves. Take care. Keep warm if it's winter where you are in your part of the world. And um, I hope you've all uh, got power and everything. If you're in this country and you had power knocked out by the storm, I really hope that's sorted out for you because it must be a bit uh, a bit awful not having power in the winter. OK, look after yourselves and bye.